The president will be entertaining a special guest at the White House this week, President of China, Hu Hintao. The relationship between China and the United States has been tense as of late. China recently demonstrated its military prowess in showing off a new stealth fighter plane and long-range missiles capable of taking out U.S. aircraft carriers. The show of force prompted a not-so-friendly visit by U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates last week. Also, China must play a role in negotiations with North Korea if the U.S. is to see any success in urging that nation to drop its nuclear ambitions on an increasingly volatile Korean peninsula. But perhaps the top item on the agenda for Presidents Obama and Hu will be trade. That is the huge trade deficit between our nation and China and the manipulation of Chinese currency that only makes the problem worse. If the deficit persists, it looks like our economic recovery may remain stagnant. So now that President Obama has the Chinese leader's attention this week, what does he need to do to improve our economy and relations between the two superpowers in both the short and the long run? Scott Paul is here in the studio. He's the executive director of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. Scott, welcome. Tom, great to be with you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Can you describe to our viewers what a, a, a trade deficit is, what the consequences of this are? But, but just, you know, let's, let's start at the beginning. What is it? Absolutely. Ultimately, it means it's a drag on economic growth, and it means it's money that we have to pay back, just like the budget deficit. Most people don't know about the trade deficit. What it is in real terms is the fact that our imports are vastly greater than our exports. And in the case of China, probably about $250 billion to $300 billion just last year alone, uh, more goods that came in from China than we exported to China. It's, it's about a five to one ratio. That means that China is able to accumulate uh, foreign currency reserves. And literally, Tom, it means that factories are closing, jobs are being lost, and this debt is piling up. We, we closed 42,000 factories during the eight years of the Bush administration in the United States. Not 42,000 jobs, 42,000 right. factories in this country. Um, it, doesn't it also mean that for every billion dollars that the Chinese end up with, and they're, if you set aside oil, they represent 80% of our total national trade deficit, that every, every dollar, every, you know, let's talk billions, <laughs> as Everett Dirksen said, you know, billion here, billion there. Uh, every billion dollars that they end up with in, in surplus, and we end up in deficit, really because they're dollars. Ultimately, the only place they can spend them is in the United States. And so they end up coming over here and buying our office buildings, buying our companies, buying our land, buying our mines. Buying, and eventually, we become a vassal state to them. Right now, they're just buying our, well, they're also buying all those things, but they're also buying about $2 trillion or about a trillion dollars, I guess it is, of our debt. That's and, right. And so it, we end up being well, a vassal nation, isn't it? I mean, That's exactly right. I mean, it is almost a trillion dollars that they hold in uh, treasuries, uh, which, which is, is an extraordinary amount. Dollars. Which is an extraordinary amount. Uh, they also are buying up U.S. companies now, uh, putting a greater stake in U.S. companies. They're buying up real estate for sure. Uh, they're entering into joint ventures. They're establishing their own foothold in the American market. And it's because of this wealth that they've been able to accumulate because they have a China China, that is, has a very mercantilist policy, uh, and unfortunately, a lot of folks in Washington have been fine with that, uh, both Democrats and Republicans, for far too long, and now we're dealing with the consequences of that. We have a jobless recovery, we have stagnant wages, sure. and we owe China a ton of money. Mercantilism was really uh, arguably invented by uh, Henry VII, and it was called the Tudor Plan in the 1457, as I recall, and, and then you know, and took England from being a country that literally exported nothing but wool to being an industrial power. And Alexander Hamilton, in 1791, proposed his 13-point or 11-point plan mm -hmm. for American mercantilism. It was adopted by Congress in various pieces in 1793, George Washington, a couple by executive order. And from 1793 until the early 80s, we had a, a system that protected domestic manufacture, mostly with tariffs. The average tariff during that entire period was 31 percent. They, they went down as low as 20 and up as mm -hmm. high as 40 over various wars and things. And then with Reaganomics came the end of the tariff system. And then Bill Clinton, of course, just threw it out and closed the door with NAFTA and GATT and the WTO. Um, is there anything now, 30 years on, that Obama can do to protect American industries without you know, short of just completely bombing out of the WTO and saying we're going to go back to mercantilism on our own. You touched on a big point, Tom, which is that we have limited our options uh, through the WTO 
uh, it, it, our entry into it and then the terms of China's entry into it. Uh, and so we have agreed not to do certain things. And so it literally would take backtracking from that a little bit. The only options available to Obama right now are kind of cleanup. If, if China has imports that are surging into this country, you determine that they've harmed an industry. After the fact, the industry or the union, and the steel workers have actually filed a number of these cases, uh, can petition for relief. Uh, and, and, in fact, and Bush did that at th one point. He absolutely. actually even threw a tariff on steel. He said that, that's right. Bush did. And actually, Obama has on uh, tires, and he mm -hmm. may well do so on Chinese wind turbines, uh, which is bound to be an issue of contention this week. But the challenge is, again, Tom, that's cleanup. I mean, that's not a that's proactive not policy. policy. And ultimately, you're going to be faced with these millions of manufacturing jobs that have been lost, the 42,000 factories that you indicated. And of course, that number has grown uh, sure. since the recession has really turbocharged oh, yeah, that over was the last of couple of years. That's exactly right. And so it is, it is a, a bit of a mess. And uh, the ch I think the, the bigger challenge is, though, that the political elite in both parties somehow support this policy. They think it's OK. Yeah. And, and that's I, really the I've big challenge. I've been saying for here. years that the first political party that goes back to what Ross Perot is promoting and adopts protectionism. And, you know, oddly enough, I mean, Pat Buchanan and I agree on this. And we're, you know, <laughs> right. anything Pat Buchanan and I agree on has got to be strange. But the first political party that adopts this policy, I think, is going to start really winning elections. And, and, you know, that's the populist position. But anyhow, Scott, we're, we're out of time. Scott, Paul, thanks so much for being thanks, with us. Thanks, Tom. And thanks for a very cogent ex explanation. Thank and, you. And Thank you. I appreciate it. China is eating our lunch across the board when it comes to economic growth and investments in new technology and will continue to do so unless America changes its tune on our, frankly, insane so-called free trade policies. Let me just lay this out for you. In the early 80s, Reaganomics set aside, you know, Hamilton's plan, as I, as I mentioned just a minute ago to Scott. And in, in, by 18, 1985, we had had a trade surplus with China for over 100 years. In 1985, we had our first trade deficit with them. It was $6 million. Now, $6 million is like walking around money. It's, a, it's, 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 a, it's, it's virtually nothing. $6 million, we've got this, this graph here. $6 million, this, this graph, by the way, is not to scale. So it's just, I mean, it's just, it's, it's a, a billion is a thousand million, okay? So this is $6 million in 1985. 1986, we hit our first billion dollar trade deficit. We went from $6 million to $1,664 million by 1986. And, and, and then this continued, as you can see well here. You can probably see it over better, better over here. Um, 1985, 1990, we were at 10 billion. And if we can advance this, then by 1995, we were at 34 billion. By 2000, we were at 83 billion. Again, this is not to scale. This should be sh shooting up even more. And then we went above 200 billion in 2005. And we're now at 252 billion. Now, this is Every single year, this year or last year, the Chinese accumulated 252 billion of our dollars. Keep in mind, six million measly dollars back in, when this started with Reagan. 252 billion dollars. And the only thing they can do with that money is come here and buy this country. It's, it's a, it, it, is an, it is an economic disaster.